I need you to consider today. You were a lost sheep. Just put that in your mind for right now. I was a lost sheep. Truth Broadcast with the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ of the Apostolic Faith. Apostle Anthony J. Patterson is the General Overseer. For more information, visit us online at theapostolicfaith.org or dial 610-583-2400 or write to P.O. Box 109, Darby, Pennsylvania, 19023 in the United States of America. Look on the brighter side when the light has come and the shadows all are going away. Look on the brighter side. Today, sheep that were lost know that they are sheep. And that they were lost. But the day find them found by the eye of God. By the will of God, we were found. And my mind knows now I was lost. But today, 
I'm found. The Holy Ghost is in this place. It built this place. And when it built this place, it built it for you. It took, as the man say, all the lies out. And when he finished, because this place belonged to a Baptist person that lied, but God cleaned it and made it fit for his people to come in and worship in spirit and in truth. The scripture says, what if some don't believe? It will not make the word of God have no effect on you. You must realize you are sheep, but you were lost. Today, you are now found because the word of the Lord went out in the world and it found souls that were willing and that soul Gave in to the word of God and said, Lord, whatever you have me do, I'll do. I heard the word and the Holy Ghost said, let me show my son that when there is speech in this house, I told my son in the prophets that I will speak with a stammering lip and another tongue will I speak to my people. I will speak to them with a stammer and I will speak to them with another tongue. When he speaks, it is a mystery to be revealed at the time God has appointed and anointed. So the time is appointed now for the sheep to be transfigured. I come to change you this day. I suffered the night, but the night has passed. And I knew my suffering for that night was so I couldn't get here to tell you it's time to be transfigured. It's time, and I want to know who's on your right hand and who's on your left hand. Who are you going to walk to this mount with? You got to come up here with something that was written. Jesus himself chose Elijah. And he chose Moses. He chose them for a reason. I heard the transfiguration, but the Holy Ghost had me ready during the night. I fought sickness all night long. Because the Holy Ghost knew, I'm going to spare you, but you're going to my people to do a work. The word of the Lord is going to do a work today. If mama don't go, you go. If daddy don't go, you go. If the other 13 out of 14 don't go, you go. Because mama waiting on one. She said, Lord, just keep your word and give me. So let's transfigure. Who are you going to bring with you? Who are you going to stand with that prophesied about you? Who spoke about you that you will bring with you? When someone can sit at a dining table and you ask, can you tell me? Something that is most in your mind about the mind of God that you served. And they sit and tell you calmly. I remember when before the beginning of the year, he would call his staff to him and have each one of them repent to him before the new year come in. And he take their sins and remove them. Who she got at her right hand? The man of God that have given her the remission of all sin. I can be transfigured because that man is standing now at my right hand. But I walk with a man today 
that I will carry on my left hand to make my weaker hand stronger than even my right hand. Because when I was down and out and sickness had a hold of my frame, it was that angel that stood on the mountain top and told me to come up hither. And that thing that held me could not hold me anymore because my whole soul was transfigured and my flesh and bone began to move and it carried my flesh and blood. What if some don't believe? This is the service to be transfigured. There are some that question whether or not I'm an apostle of Jesus Christ. Today is the day for proof. My record is here. There are some that carry Peter and the rest of the apostles at their right hand. And one said, my leg was broken when I was here in Dallas, but I stood with the man of God that was written in the word of the Lord that their shadow cast on them, healed them. But today, I walk with an angel that's on my left hand and he will make my left hand stronger than my right hand because when my leg was broken, his shadow was cast on my frame and my leg was healed. So my flesh and bone received the power from the man of God that carried my flesh and blood to this very hour today. Today is the day for proof. There's a woman that had Jesus Christ on her right hand. That Jesus, garment was able to heal her issue of her blood. And she said, I stand with Jesus. But today, I have an anointed one at my left hand that will make my left hand stronger than my right hand because he, by the power of a garment from one that I stand with that's behind me, that's going forward, was draped on my soul. And my issue is no longer an issue for me because my flesh and bone has been transfigured and it has carried my flesh and blood all these days. There's a woman that had a son that said, I will go in the old book and find a Shudamite woman that had a child laid upon a bed and she watched the child die. But this woman said, I'll stop it in this progress. I'll talk to death itself and I'll hold death back. She got that in her right hand with Elijah. But she said, let me tell you today, I walk with a man an angel of God and I know it that's on my left hand that will make my left hand stronger than my right hand because God, my God is in front of me as my witness that my son is alive today because I ask of God and my flesh and bone spoke to my flesh and blood and the blessed flesh and blood of my son and he remains alive today. With us is a record. With a woman said, I'm dying. She looked in the word and found someone crying out. Lord, have mercy. And she put them on her right hand. But she'll tell you, on my left hand, 
is a powerful angel of God that came to me speedily and spoke to my condition and my flesh and bones was revived and I have carried my flesh and blood all these days and I stand before this church ready to be transfigured so when we all are transfigured all you gonna see is Jesus only A son stand in the congregation of the holy and tell the people of God, my parents' work has been seen. Found the book. But on his left hand is his uncle. That he'll tell you when a dog was mawing at my flesh and blood. There was a mighty hand that came down from God and I know it had to be God that stopped that dog from getting to my throat and I come to the congregation of the holy to tell you I'm ready to be transfigured. I'm ready to change from flesh and blood to flesh and bone. So all you're going to see in my life is all you will see is Jesus, the power of the women. Say, I got women on my right hand and my left hand. They're my re re but I'm looking at Jesus. Today is the day for saints to be transfigured. The mind is renewed. The heart is fixed. Everything is ready now for the catching away. Today is the time that weeping shall end. Sorrows ceased. What if some don't believe? In a few days, the 22nd of this month you call February, the Lord transfigured me. And as Bishop Shelton stood with me and Bishop Nehemiah stood with me, it was Nehemiah that opened my mouth for the Lord to put the rocks on my tongue. What if some don't believe? But I want to tell you, I can testify for myself. I was transfigured. And I knew the enemy was at my right hand to withstand me. But God himself took off my filthy garments and gave me a linen garment white. And I glistened before the Lord. But I had to come back and get you. Because if I could have stayed where I was forever, I would have stayed there. But there was a need, hallelujah to God, for somebody to say, I want to be saved. And what I got here in Dallas is not doing it for me. I don't even have the Holy Ghost. And I want the ghost, but I can't even hear myself. When God is overshadowing me, my flesh and bones won't let me hear. But my flesh and bones want to hear. Because the flesh and blood is in the way of my flesh and bones. But I came in a sanctuary as I walked with everybody that walked on the day of Pentecost. And I go even to the room of the upper room where the Holy Ghost fell. I put them at my right hand. I will put Cornelius house at my right hand. But let me tell you, an angel came down to me. He will make my left hand stronger than my right hand. Because when I touched his right hand, all the powers of God came in me instantly. And I could taste and I could see that God was good. I was transfigured. 
The people at Pentecost had gone. The people in the upper room had gone. But what stood with me were the saints of Dallas that heard me speak in an unknown tongue as the Spirit of God gave me utterance. I was transfigured. I was glorified. And I stand before you today still glorified. I stand as a sanctified mountain to get my husband to where he needs to be to save my children. I stand as a defense of God for the things that he has given me and the power of my womanhood. I stand ready to be transfigured. Who do you have with you? Who do you have with you? It got to be here. It's got to be some prophetic thing of the past that you want to happen to you when they are gone. And the only thing is standing is you. You got to tell God, I've tasted of the heavenly fruit. I know what it tastes like. I've handled the words of life. I know what it feels like. What if some don't believe? You'll believe when I'm transfigured. And today is the day for my transfiguration. The only ones that can go is a few. We can't take everybody. We're only going to take the saints. Take a saint with you. Somebody that you know is going to believe when they see the thing you see. And you tell them and they can't see it. But they're going to say, I believe you. I believe you. I believe you. I believe. Up to the mount. I'll go. With the host of sin all around me but to the mount I'm going to go if you want to know about the apostleship the church is still built on it the church is still built on prophets those are the two positions that God talked to the others the apostle has to put them in place a prophet can't put a deacon in place a prophet can't put the teachers and all in place. It's the apostleship that put everything in place. They put in the church what's wanting, not a prophet. It's the apostleship that see the need in the church and the Lord tell the apostle, do this, do that. And after I was converted, then I had to come to my brothers and convert them. Even if they have gone astray, the Lord sent me to them first to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God. That is the job of the apostleship. The prophet's job is to give us the sight. What is God going to do? What is going to edify the church? I'd rather you all prophesy, but don't forbid them to speak in tongues because they are speaking to God. So don't forbid them to do it. If you are in the sanctuary, don't forbid them, the scripture say, to do it because you will find yourself fighting God. But the apostleship cannot move until God moves it to bring his church to where it's going to go. It does all the correction. You've got to tell the man of God what's in you. You've got to show him what's in you. He'll let you go on. It'll be the deacon that try to shut you up. But the man of God said, let him speak. Because if they don't speak, you won't know what's in them to fight. You won't have the opportunity like today to make the brother understand Jesus is talking. I got it. I got it. You just listen. 
and be thankful that the Holy Ghost is sitting in the house. Ye men of Galilee, these are not drunk as you suppose. You might not be where the Spirit is falling on you, but it shall fall on the one that it fell on. This is the day to be transfigured. We can tell the brother, you might not believe who he is. I do. And the seal of his apostleship is all of these in the Lord because there were thousands of us. He gathered us. Do you know anyone else that came to gather us? The Lord sent him. We called Geno Jennings. He didn't come. We called Goodwin and this one and Goodman and all of those. They didn't come. But one call to Bishop Patterson established this. Now the others want to come. But God has already built the foundation for Dallas. It's the same foundation that Christ laid himself. It's time to be transfigured. It's time to be glorified in your mind and in your heart that I am a witness to what the word of the Lord said. When the Holy Ghost says, there's a sign when I come. When I come, I bring a sign. When I come, I bring a sign. You're going to know that I'm sitting on you. When you hear the sign, I'll prepare you for the sign. I'll remove the stumbling blocks before the sign. But when I come in, I'm going to let you know I'm in by the sign. People say, oh, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost and no sign. The false folks in the world all claim the Holy Ghost because they say come down and receive. They all walk down and walk back like they walk down. But when the Holy Ghost shall come upon you, it shall give you power. And in the book of Mark, he said, these signs shall follow them that believe. One of the signs, they shall speak. They shall speak. They shall speak. Yes, the Lord prepared you. Oh yeah, he prepared you because he had a lot of work to do. The preparation was made to remove the enemy. I'm going to read about another lunatic. That's what I'm going to call you from now on. My lunatic. Because the lunatic, the devil can take you and throw you in the water and try to condemn you. And try to consume you. He'll throw you in the fire and try to burn you up. But the Lord kept delivering you and kept delivering until one day he said, I'm going to remove this. You will no longer be a lunatic. But that was preparation for the Holy Ghost coming on the day of Pentecost. For the Holy Ghost falling in the upper room. When all that work was done in the old book, there was a removing of things. But it was not the Holy Ghost yet until the tongues came down from heaven and you were walking down those steps and your body and your mind and your flesh and blood was finally ready for your flesh and bones to speak in another tongue. And God took the tongue to say, I'm here now. And I'm here to keep you forever. Because I have an angel that's going to come down to Dallas. And I, all I want you to do is see his chariot. And I want you to speak and say, there goes the church. There goes the man of God. Even in, a, in, the, in your inebriated state, God sobered you up. And say, there is the man of God. That's the testimony. I was prepared for. The Holy Ghost. And my ghost that I have now is going to stay here forever. It's going to stay until I'm transfigured. Until I am no longer in flesh and blood. I'm going to walk in the spirit. And I'm going to gain the things of the spirit. The things the spirit prophets. I'm going to gain. Who are you going to carry now with you? To your transfiguration who will you take? Which prophet will you bring? Which anointed one of God will you bring? Jesus chose Moses. He had to chose 
He chose Moses for a reason. It was Moses that said the Lord was going to raise up a prophet from among the brethren and him shall you hear. He had to then choose Elisha, Elijah, because of what was prophesied in the book of Malachi, that he had to come first and open up the way for Christ. He took them to his transfiguration. I'm going to fulfill both of those in one. Who are you going to walk with? What's in the book? You're going to say, that's at my right hand, and this is at my left hand. What are you going to bring to your transfiguration? What are you going to bring to this mountain of prayer? You cannot bring a lie. I'm ready for Kenny to get the proof that's in the studio from Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. When I stood with Christ Jesus, my Lord, and I stood with the anointed one that told me, do not accept the crumbs from my son, Omega. He's going to try to give you crumbs, but don't you accept them. I carry that with me today. I carry today when the man of God himself made me sit at a gate, his gate, and receive everything that had been done wrong. He said, I don't even know how to fix this. He said, it happened on my watch, and I don't know how to fix this. I carry that at my right hand to fix. Because I have some standing today that said, I'm repentant. I'm standing with Christ, my Lord, that said to me, I'm so sorry. That I made you like this. But I died. So I could transfigure you. And change you from mortal. To an immortality. I stand with Paul. And we're all here to tell you. Can you see Jesus? Can you see the Lord? Is he on your right hand? Is the Lord on your left hand? Therefore, God's record is standing with you. And the innumerable amount of angels that have us all, that's going up and down on all of us, they're just bringing us all the way to Christ. Can you see Jesus? Are you hiding now from Jesus? Have you covered yourself so the Lord can't see you? Because you're so afraid of the thing that you have done. Today is the day to wipe block and forgive so you are ready to be transfigured the prophet can't do that for you the teacher can't do it hallelujah can't do it he gave the apostleship the power whosoever sins you remit they are remitted he didn't tell the prophets that he told the prophets to prophesy because the prophecies of the prophets are going to cease but the apostleship will go forever because it's the foundation that you're going to stand before Christ on. You're going to stand on me as you stand before God. Say it was him. If you die in my day, I got to give an account to every soul. I set a watch for them. So when he said, where are the sheep that I put in your charge? I'm going to say, here's my mother first. Even before I say, here's my daddy. Here's my mother, the seed from which I got breath. As my mother stood before death and life, and I could put her in death, the Holy Ghost gave me life and gave her life. And God knew at that moment what he was going to do for me. So what did he do? God took me from my right hand and put Bishop Shelton on my left hand and said, bring this one to me. And when I went, he taught me everything I'm giving you today. He taught me to fight the fight of faith. He said, we're going to fight it in a strange way, but we're going to win. Do you think he cared if people didn't believe? A whole lot of people didn't believe he was nothing. But God thought he was something. And I say his work was better than Bishop Johnson's work because he kept Bishop Johnson's work. He didn't let it fail. So my work is better than his because I got the remnant. I got the thing that such as should be saved. Hallelujah to God. I stayed here long enough to grab Mena. Who could keep Mena this long? Who could hold Mena? 
is not an angel of God. You stayed here long enough for the word of the Lord to have an effect on you. And it's just not words on a page. It's just not blocks on a page. But it has come alive. You say, well, we weren't there when it was written. No, none of us was there when it was written. But if you see the name of Jesus in here, then that's us. Because that's the name we coming in. That's the name that has the power. That's the name that has my name written in the book of life. If you see Jesus, then you see me. You can only know me if you know Jesus. Here's a woman that wouldn't have been here. She tried to kill herself many times. But God spared her. Her daughter came first. She didn't know anything about this way. Her daughter came in, got the spirit, got the baptism, got everything. Brought the mama in, the daughter went out. The mama said, go on. But as for me, I'm going to walk with this man. I was frightened at everything. I was frightened at my own shadow. I couldn't drive a car across a bridge. Because I would think that I was going to go off the bridge. But that angel got in my car one day. He said, I'll go with you. And from that day, what bridge? He's at my left hand making my left hand stronger than my right hand. Because God put him in our midst for a season and a reason. Do you want to be transfigured? Do you want to be glorified? Do you want to be changed? Today and this moment is yours. When you tell God you keep me until my days here are done. Don't you know you gave God a commandment to keep you until all your days are done? What do you think now he's going to do? In the processing of your transformation, it started when you repented. It kept on moving as you got in water and went down in his precious name and covered all this sin with water and washed it. And you came up then walking in the newness of life. Then you start calling on a name that had all power. And that name then triggered something in your soul and changed you instantly. It set the foundation now for your transfiguration. All you got to do is now walk up to the mouth climb up and you can hear a soul stand before you today and said I'm almost there and I began to question God can she see it can she see it can she see you can she see you her testimony to me she said it twice and I took God and I said in the mouth of two or three witnesses because she said it and then she heard it and then her soul said it the second time I said, I'll take it at the witness. She see you. Let her reach her destination that all of her labor will not be in vain. Her testimony is I walked around in so many Pentecostal churches. My mom and my dad drug me around. But one day I found this truth at a young age. And I heard this man preaching and I stood up to be baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ. And the Lord put that angel in the water with me. That angel, Bishop Johnson, stood in the water with me and baptized me in water in the name of Jesus Christ. Not many souls can say he did a baptism. But I'm one to tell you, I carry him at my right hand. But the one I walk with now, 
My God, he got me filled with the Holy Ghost and the power of God's word. I'll walk with him forever. I'll carry Bishop Johnson then on my right hand. But I'll carry Bishop Patterson on my left hand because my left hand is getting stronger. It's my weaker, but it's getting stronger than my right hand. Because I love the knowledge of the word opening as God reveals himself to me. I look at him and I can see he's a father of light. And I was in a dark place and here comes the light and I can say, there you are. I see you. I see you. I see you. I'm ready to be transfigured. I can see the mountain top. I got a few more steps because I can see a hand. Come on up here, though. You got Mark's. I'll take Mark's account since you're there. And he said unto them, He said to them, Verily I say unto you, I speak to you. I'm speaking to you. Let my words hit your ear. Don't try to consume them right now. Just let them hit your ear and become your thought. Let my words become your thought. And he began to speak. That there be some of them. He said, some of you will not taste death. You won't die until I come in the upper room. That power come down from heaven and make tongues upon tongues upon tongues. Some of you will not taste death. And stand, that stand there which shall not taste of death till they have seen the kingdom of God come with power. You're going to see the kingdom of God come in power. He's talking about the Holy Ghost. The kingdom of God is now in you okay? You, you're seeing the transformation and the transfiguring. Yes. And after six days Jesus take with him Peter. And Come James. on, Peter. Who are you going to bring with you? And James. Come on, James. And Come on, John, my brother. And, Come. And leadeth them up into a high mountain apart by themselves. I'm going to excuse me a minute. I'm going to just take some liberty. Come on, my sisters, my old lazy brothers. All my sisters are here. They came in one by one trying to surprise me. So I'm going to take my sisters with me. Because, well, I carry my brothers too. It's four of us. <laughs> I guess we'll bring them along. The baby said, come on, so I guess we'll bring you. Here's my mother's seed. Yesterday, my mother fell asleep in 2007. But she's already transfigured. I don't have to worry about her. I know I'll meet her in peace. I put her to rest. And I had my older sister check it. I said, Angela, see if you can wake her. My father already knew. So I'm trying to bring you to where we are. I know I was born from a holy woman. Some of you were. And it is a sanctified woman that can sanctify unbelief. So who are you going to bring with you? Bring your sisterhood. Bring your brotherhood. When we come to the mount and we watch God be transfigured, then just stand up and turn and look back and say, who do I see? You only see Jesus. And what are you going to do when he touch you? That's where I'm going to get you. I'm going to put you to the word that when it touch you, it's going to transform you. It's going to transfigure you. It's going to make you a mortality. Go to immortality. Yes. And he was transfigured before them. He was transfigured. Who you got with you? You're transfigured now. Who do you have standing with you? What's in the word that's standing with you? What's on your right hand? What's on your left hand? What did the prophet say? Behold, I'll show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. But we're going to be changed. I will put that with me. I will put with me when Christ said, 
when I shall appear. What he going to do to me? So now that you are transfigured and you know you're standing with all the prophets of old. You're standing with Bishop Johnson, Bishop Shelton, Bishop Nehemiah, Peter, Paul, James, John, all of them. They're all, they're transfigured with you. And in the middle of all of that is Christ. Yes. And his raiment became shining. I need you to start glistering. I need you to start having some kind of glitter. Some call it a light, white, bright. And some call it a white raiment. All the same thing. Are you going to glisten in front of God shining? That the trials that tried to make you dark couldn't. All the mud that was through on you just came off like a water on a duck. All the trials didn't do nothing. All the things to the flesh could not change the soul. Because the soul said, I'm going to climb this mountain. And the legs don't want to go out. Pull them up by my hand. But I'm going to make this journey somehow. Somehow. I'm going to make the journey somehow. Exceeding white as snow. White as snow. No man could even look unto it and understand why are they shining like that? Yes. So as no fuller on earth can wipe them. Nothing on this earth can do nothing to you. Now that you're transfigured, what do you have with you? What are you walking with? Who are with you? Who do you have by the hand? What do you want to carry with you? So it'll go into Jesus. And there appeared unto them Elias with Moses. And they were talking with Jesus. Who's talking to you? Are you going to say, Lord, it's good for us to be here? Is there going to be a conversation going on with us? It's a good thing for us to be here. Because there's a lot of things that's happening that I got to change. There's a lot of things I got to talk to Jesus about since he brought me on this mount and transfigured me. And I got that shooter my woman with me. He's got to give me back my son from death. And come rejoice with me, oh my sisterhood. My son that was dead is now alive forevermore. And Peter answered and said, to Peter him, said to Jesus, Master, Master, it, it is good for us. It's good for us to be here. To be here. We're all now together. We're transfigured. You know somebody's with me. I could do this on my own. You know somebody's on my left hand and my right hand. But in this paradise, I'm not a fool to think the enemy is not here too. But I ain't paying him no mind. I'm going to speak to Jesus. Yes. And let us make three tabernacles. We'll make three tabernacles. One for you, one for Elijah, and one for Moses. Before you do that, before you do that, let's see how many tabernacles we're going to need when we get finished. You know how many you're going to need? And that's the one he got for you. You don't need but that one glorified tabernacle. And when you come in all your glory, all I'm going to see is, yes. One for thee. One for thee. And one for Moses. One for Moses. And one for Elias. And one for Elias. But I don't need but one Lord. Bring me the one you got for me. Yes. For he wist not what to say. Didn't know what to say. For they were so afraid. They were afraid. They were frightened. Seeing the Lord talking to Moses. Let me ask you a question. How did they know it was Moses? Did somebody say, give me the book and show me that's Moses? Show me, Lord. Prove to me that's Elijah. That you're talking to. Amen. This thing is a knowing. This thing is a faith. This thing has been the Holy Ghost tell you. This is what it is. You believe God. There was no book. They were scrolls. The printing press did this. God had a mouth. This is the history of the church. You are living what God is right now. Peter said this is the present truth right now. It's now being written on hearts. Not paper. You want to know who somebody is? Let them speak from the heart and they'll tell you. 
They'll tell you. This shooter, my woman, there was no way. Say, where did she get that from? That if I touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. Who said that? Somebody know where that's written? All the work Jesus began to do. Who picked up and said, where did he get it from? He borrowed somebody's book. Opened the book. He said, this is being fulfilled in your day right now. And he gave back the book. He was the book. He's a living word. Not the printed word. And there was a cloud that overshadowed them. The cloud, the Holy Ghost, has now already overshadowed you. And a cloud and a voice came out of the cloud. A voice came out the cloud and it's going to say, Beloved saints, I am well pleased that you made it to the Texas State Convention. A few days before I I came to that anointed one in 1994 to stand before me to be transfigured, who do you have with you? Who do you stand with? Yes. This is my beloved son. This is my beloved church. Hear him. Hear him. Don't look for anything in the past. Hear what he said. What did Christ say? He said, I'll be with you to the end of the world. The world has not ended, so he's still with the church. Hear him. He said, the world cannot contain the books if you write down everything I was going to do. Because if you wrote down everything that was going to come to pass, there'd be no need for faith. Because I would have wrote down somebody would prophesy and said, Anthony is coming. Somebody did. I can take the writings and show you in the writings, I was prophesied that I was coming. I was preached before I ever came. A vision of a prophet. Since we believe the prophet, a prophet came and said, the man of God is going to come in the month of February. And he's coming in Jacksonville. The prophet stood up and told the church and the church laughed at him. But she went on the rest. But everything she prophesied came to pass. Yes. And suddenly, suddenly, when they had, when they looked around about, they saw no man anymore. They only saw. Save Jesus only with themselves. Now that you're transfigured, all the prophets that you brought with you, all the saying of Jesus that he brought with you, I want to merge that into you and you stand in front of God. He will direct thy path. He will keep you. He will not let you fall. He himself will change you from a mortal to immortality. Believeth thou this. When you're transfigured, bring your mama. Bring your mother. See, my mother wasn't in the way. She gave you life. Bring them. Brothers, bring your wives. Whether they're gone or here, bring them. Because your sanctification keeps them. It makes them make the union sanctified and holy. Stand before God. And don't try to cover your ills and your wrong. Just tell God I'm wrong. Then he'll cover you with himself. The people in the garden covered because they were trying to hide their sins from God. Just come uncovered and said, I'm wrong. That is the best way to do it. Throw yourself on the mercy of the court and God himself will cover you. And then he'll lead you on and guide you. And as they came down from the mountain, as they were coming down from the mountain, he charged them that they should no, tell no man what things they had seen till the son of man were risen from the dead. So you don't have to do this part. He's already risen. So when you go down, you talk about Jesus. You talk about what the Lord has done. And I don't care what you're looking at. Change it. Change it. And they kept that saying with themselves. They kept them hmm. questioning one with another. Talking to each other. What the rising from the dead should mean. What do you mean about coming from the dead? You got this part. You know what he was talking about. He said, give me three days and I'll raise it up. 
Now that he's up, you can talk about, I've been transfigured. And I have all the words of the old book. I had all the words of the new book. I have the man of God that preached me in. I have the one that went to sleep and I'm still standing. But better yet, I got the one that God put in the church today. I walk with him daily. Yes. And they asked him, saying, Lord, why said the scribes that Elias must come? From why did they talk about in the book of Malachi that Elijah had to come? And he answered. He answered and said, told them, you hear this conversation going on with Jesus? That's why I'm going to leave you with Jesus. When I finish, I'm going to commend you to God and to the words of his grace that's going to build you, that you're going to believe everything that come out, not just out of the book, but out of the mouth of God. Yes. Elias verily cometh first. Elijah had to come first. Because he had to get the way prepared for me. And restore all things. And put everything back to get us ready. To meet the Lord. And how it is written. It was written the man. about the son of man. It's happened now. He said Elijah has come already. But they didn't know it. But he made them to know it. They had the book. But they didn't understand anything until God opened his mouth and told them what the book meant. That he must suffer many things and be set at naught. Didn't they do it? Didn't they suffer, make him suffer? Yes. Did he win? Yes. yes. But I say unto you. I say unto you. That Elias is indeed come. He's already come. And they have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Whatever they had in mind to do to him, they did. And then all of a sudden, their understanding opened. And they said, oh my God, he's talking about John the Baptist. The blessedness has come. It has come for you. You were a sheep. Sheep that was lost. You were not a goat. You were a sheep that just happened to be lost. All you needed was a shepherd to say, show me the way. Thank you for listening to the Whole Truth Gospel broadcast of the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ of the Apostolic Faith. Visit our website at www.theapostolicfaith.org. Dial 610-583-2400 or write to us at P.O. Box 109, Darby, Pennsylvania, 19023 in the United States of America. Gracias por escuchar al programa Toda Verdad, Iglesia del Señor Jesucristo de la Fe Apostólica. Ven con nosotros porque te haremos bien. Nos pueden visitar en la página web www.theapostolicfaith.org. Merci de avoir écouté la misión de radio de la Iglesia del Señor Jesucristo de la Fe Apostólica. Venez avec nous. Nous vous ferons du bien. Pour plus d'informations, visitez le site www.lafoiapostolique.org. Děkuji za poslouchání našeho rádia v pravdě Pana Ježíše Krista o apostolské víře. Více informací naleznete na adrese theapostolicfaith.org. If you are listening to this broadcast during the day, then have a good day. If you are listening to this broadcast during the evening hours, have a good night.